It's late summer in northern Minnesota, and I'm with a good friend by the name of Jason Durham. Jason is a fanatical bass fisherman, and some of these lakes are some of the best bass fishing you're going to find, but as summer progresses, a lot of these fish will move deep. In I tell you what, over the past, especially the past 10 years, soft plastics have completely dominated bass fishing, but there's always a few anglers that are doing something outside the bounds, doing something different, zigging when everybody else is zagging. And Jason's discovered a pretty neat program using traditional marabou jigs. Basically, you can hang them below the boat, you can drift with them, or you can cast them and just let them glide. But marabou has got a, just a, a neat action in the sense that that tail just pulsates in the water. And more and more anglers are discovering across the Midwest how effective marabou can be. I've heard of people doing really good on the Great Lakes, for example, just dragging basically dead sticking marabou jigs. But there's definitely a time and place for it. And it's just something that a lot more anglers are exploring. You know, these marabou jigs, it's not a new concept. They've been around for a long time. People have been using them for decades to catch all different species of fish. And really, uh, what's old is new now. Anglers are starting to figure out that you can catch big bass, especially big smallmouth bass, using these jigs. The technique is pretty simple. And we're doing this in, in deep water. We're over 20 feet deep. Cast it out and just leave your rod tip high. Let it glide back towards you. Take up your slack. You really, you don't need to add any motion to it. You don't need to jig it, pop it, just let it glide. And when a fish hits it, it's not gonna rip the rod out of your hands. All you feel is a tick. And as soon as you feel that tick, set the hook, fish on. Here's a fish. There he is. Had a boy. Basically doing nothing. <laughs> oh, I love Pretty that. good one, huh? Yeah, oh, look at that fish go. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. Water is so clear. You can see him down there forever. Whoa! <laughs> Large mouth. Yeah, it looks like it don't have it. Yeah, nice large mouth. Bring him in here. Yeah, 22 feet I think this fish was. There we go. Pop that jig out. There. There, a nice start, huh? That fish in the water. Well, yeah, just like you said, Jason, just casting it out there and just letting it drop. Tick. <laughs> That's a fun way to catch them. Fun way to catch them. There's one. Got him? Yeah. All right. That one was dragging, huh? Yeah. It's clear water. They sure don't like the boat, do they? No. <laughs> and they're so strong. Yeah, that's cool. Something about a smallmouth in clear water, you know, appreciate that fight. Watch it 10, 15 feet down. That's cool. And this fish, it's really not that big. It's not tiny, but it's not that big. But they just don't give up. Yeah. Now, one thing that I always tell anglers is, especially in the tournament setting, if you're fishing for smallmouth, mm -hmm. when you bring that fish up, you're constantly watching behind it because um, they're very competitive for food. And there's times that you'll have two, three, four more fish besides the one that you have on follow up. Yeah, especially the regurgitating, spitting up minnows and stuff. There. Exactly. And there's times where you'll be reeling a fish in and you'll actually lose it. Your bait will come free and one of the other fish behind it will immediately grab it. Yeah, that's neat. It's really not that big, but what a fighter. And look at this. It's Jason was talking about regurgitating fish. That's what it's been eating. When you fight them into the boat or up to the boat, um, they're under so much stress from that fight that a lot of times they will regurgitate what they've been eating. So it's easy to figure out what their forage has been. There, big fish. There you go. Boy, that fish just smoked you. This thing's got some weight to it. <laughs> wow, that fish is big. This should be a good one. Yeah, I can't wait to see what this is. It's so much fun. This is really a monofilament game with this clear water, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, fluorocarbon is great too. I got one Doubled too. up, doubled up, yeah, baby. There we go. Nice. Who's it's gonna be bigger? Uh, thinking yours might. I don't know. Yours had some weight to it as well. Whoa! <laughs> that yours is a nice fish. That's a nice fish. That's a dandy. Oh. 
I imagine too, you know, we're using eight pound amount of filament here where it kind of gives that jig a nice subtle glide too. Exactly. Hey, yours is quite a bit bigger. But mine's quite think. a bit bigger. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a dandy there, Jason. Hey, what the, nothing to sneeze at though. Nice. Nice fish. Boy, that is just a tank. Yours is quite a bit bigger than mine. <laughs> Both respectable fish. Yeah. Nice work. <laughs> Nothing like a person driving right over our fishing spot. Huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the good thing with the smallmouth bass, it really doesn't affect them much. In fact, they're such a curious fish that they're actually attracted to a, a boat activity yeah, to they some They get degree. used to it. Yeah. There's no sense in even getting worked up over it. Well, and the thing is, you know, it's summer. Yeah. Here, <laughs> we have a lot of months where you don't take your boat out. It's too hard on the prob. You know, the thing to stress with this style of fishing, or this type of fishing, is that this marabou is just so subtle. You can see it in my hand there. It doesn't look like much in my hand, but when you put it in the water, it just pulsates. And a lot of times, you could li literally put these jigs down below the boat, put the rod in the rod holder, just sit and drift, and fish will hit them. And so less is more. That's probably the, the thing to stress. And this is something that Durham kind of tipped me off on is don't overwork them. Just cast them out, drag them, just let them glide. Let them slide along the bottom. And, and it looks like something that fish will eat, but the triggers are so subtle. And marabou has really got a following whenever you have clear water or really pressured, turned off fish. They'll hit marabou and they won't hit a lot of other presentations at times. Here we go. Here, I got him. Big, big. Whoa! Large mouth. <laughs> Doing some aerial that fish, acrobatics. That fish came way out of the water. Largey. Well, you know, even though that's a large mouth, because there's smallmouth bass in this lake, I would still watch behind that fish. In fact, just about any species you catch, even rock bass, those smallmouth will follow them up sometimes. Yeah. I got a feeling that. Most of the smallmouth I've ever met, it'll take a meal any way they can get it. There. Yeah. You have a bite there too? Yeah. All right. Some activity in here. Didn't a little get bit a... of a breeze coming in. Yeah, it's nice. Looks like a fishy spot. That fish came out of the water by a couple of feet. Yeah, that was, that cool. was fun to see. <laughs> there. Good there fish. Go. There Good fish. Go. Just dragging, huh? Yep. Good deal. Did you even make a cast or wait for you? Yeah. Yeah, it's got some pretty good weight on it. Yeah. And when they hit, you know, it, it's not a hard hit at all. It's just a tick. Oh. Yeah, that one, I was <laughs> kind of just dragging it with the boat, letting the trolling motor do the work. And, and you can do that. I mean, you can actually uh, fish them like that consistently and catch fish. You know, that's the thing too, a lot of times with bass fish, you're just trying to find something different. Right. You know, that these fish haven't seen, and we've watched that evolution through the soft plastics with drop shotting and straight worms, and you know, watch how that is, that's evolved, and now it's continued to evolve, just show them something different. Yeah, nice fish, Jason. Real beautiful fish. Now, the jig that we're using, it's an eighth ounce Northland Marabou jig. Uh, we've got black on. In this really clear water, I try to stick with natural colors, like black, brown, uh, white's a good one too. I usually avoid some of those real bright fluorescent colors. You'll get a lot of Northern Pike that'll bite them, but not nearly as many bass. Nice fish. There we go. So the structure that we're fishing is actually kind of a deep water flat just off of the main cabbage weed milfoil weed line. Uh, because our lakes are so clear, those weeds will grow really, really deep. And we could go up in the shallower water and catch uh, quite a few largemouth, uh, but these smallmouth are really uh, not pressured very much. They're not targeted that much by anglers, primarily because you have to use and rely upon your electronics. It's really important that you're watching the screen looking for bait fish 
uh, and looking for uh, schools of fish that are down there as well. One of the reasons the, the fish are out here, the smallmouth are out in this you know, 20 foot area uh, is because of the forage that they're, that they're feeding on. So right now they're primarily feeding on minnows and you know, we saw before where I caught that fish and it spit up that small perch, um, there's a lot of different minnow varieties in the lake that they'll use. Um, they'll also feed on crayfish, but the crayfish don't typically go out quite as deep. So when the smallmouth are actively feeding on crayfish or crawdads, whatever you want to call them, they're, they're usually going to be in really shallow water and around the rocks because that's the habitat where the crayfish live. And of course they'll eat aquatic insects too, but it's uh, pretty easy to tell out here uh, that they've been feeding on minnows. Oh, I just heard one jump over there. Get to it, get to it. Got him. Got him? Yeah. All right. This is a good one. I actually heard this fish jump, turned around and cast at the splash and caught it. And up in the water column. Huh? Yeah, you could see, I could see that school of minnows just dancing around there. I think, yeah, this is actually a large mouth though. All right. Not a bad fish. No, not at all. You can tell the large mouth too because they definitely, whoops, do not fight as hard as the <laughs> smallies. Yeah, it's just a decent sized one, not huge. A lot that of fish was though. over open water though, huh? That, this, it was up really high in the water column. The jig that we're using is an eighth ounce Northland tackle jig called the Buckaboo. Now there's a couple different options You're using marabou and using hair. It's kind of neat that, that this stuff is coming back because again, you know, soft plastics, scented soft plastics, realistic soft plastics have really dominated the fishing scene for so many years that, you know, it's, it's funny to think that uh, in so many places and so many fisheries, so many different situations, you know, the jig that was in your grandpa's tackle box is again, the hot lure, but show what the marabou looks like when it's wet. There's a couple of different options, white and brown. Before you use it, you know, just a big ball of feathers, but when it gets wet, you can kind of see it sticks together, but in the water, it just, it'll just pulsate and quiver. Now, another option besides traditional feather marabou is the classic bucktail jigs. And, you know, again, there's places in Iowa and places on the Mississippi River and, and a lot of different places where, you know, the bucktails had a strong following for years, but what's happening is a lot of times you get these regional niches, these regional things that are going on in the fishing scene, and then every once in a while, something will take off and become much more wider spread. And that's what we're seeing with both hair and marabou right now. There you go, right below the boat again. Yep. Wow. There's no sense in casting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, when I take out guide clients and we fish with the marabou jigs, if they're struggling with it, I'll just have them set the rod down. Oh, there's a dandy. That's a nice fish. That's a good fish. You just have to make sure that, you know, you're watching the rod so it doesn't just disappear over the side of the boat. Yeah, that's a dandy there. Well, I've even heard of even, you know, out in Green Bay, that's becoming a pretty big technique is just dead sticking with jigs. That a is dandy. a really nice smallmouth. Absolutely. Love catching those big ones. Yeah, that's a gorgeous fish. Nice dark fish. Yeah. And part of that is just because of what they eat, their diet. Part of it's about the habitat that they're in. Um, you know, some of the smallmouth you catch are really light colored and some are super dark like this one. That's a pretty one. Beautiful. Yeah, that was cool. Something really important to pay attention to, especially after catching a fish and while fishing during the day, is making sure that the marabou feathers are straight, kind of like combing hair. So if you see right here, there's just a little piece that slipped over the hook. We just want to straighten that out. So then when the jig is swimming through the water, it can really un undulate and look natural. If you have you know, some of the feathers twisted up on it, it's actually going to make the jig spin. The fish aren't going to want to bite it, and it's going to twist up your line on your rod and reel. From our base camp in Devil's Lake, North Dakota, we travel the whole Midwest looking for the best fishing bites. We like real-time fish reports, find out what bodies of water that we're fishing just to find the general patterns and techniques that we're using. Give us a like on Facebook and hit the road with Jason Mitchell Outdoors.
you know, by far where jigs like this are the most popular is on certain river systems. Anglers are using these uh, marabou jigs quite often. There's parts of Iowa where there's a cult following of hair jigs and marabou. But what's interesting about this is that it just it pops up in certain pockets of the country and it seems to correlate with really clear water. And so Great Lakes, Green Bay, for example, where there's zebra mussels, you have great water visibility. Marabou's been the ticket in a lot of cases out there at times. Down in the Mid-South and some of those really clear reservoirs that are down there, again, marabou. Got another fish there? Yep. <laughs> All right. They're flying smally. <laughs> they are high flyers, aren't they? <laughs> Not real big, but strong. Like I was saying, the magic of marabou seems to correlate with really, really good water visibility. We've seen out here today, we've been able to see down, oh, 15 feet of water. That's how clear the water is. And it seems like clear water, that's where you're seeing more and more anglers embracing marabou. That's probably one of the trends that we're noticing across the Midwest, across the board. It's something that, you know, a lot of times with fishing, you know, it's not like the anything is technically new, but sometimes people forget about something for a while and then the wheel just keeps turning and, and things get reinvented and that's what we're seeing here. Something people should realize is that when you see this bait on the shelf in the store, in the package, or in your tackle box, or even in the water once it gets wet, it doesn't look like a whole lot. There's no plastic tail. It's really, it's just feathers that are tied to the hook. So we don't use a live bait with it. We don't have a leech on or a night crawler or a minnow. You can do that, but the way that we're doing it is just as basic as it comes, just the jig itself. Got him. Got him, all right. Boy, you're on fire. Boy, what a beautiful day out here, isn't it? it oh, it's awesome. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, this is a nice, healthy smallmouth. Yeah, I'll see. Gorgeous looking fish. So much fun. They are fun, aren't they? Great fishing opportunity. Yeah, there's another just gorgeous, gorgeous smallmouth. Yeah, they are gorgeous, all right. You know, some people talk about you know, eating them, uh, but I would encourage you too to, to uh, you know, practice catch and release and get a lot of these fish back. There. there you go. Good deal. Well, you've got this technique down, Durham. I'll give you credit. Well, I get to do it a lot. Well, it's pretty impressive. It's something different. It's something you don't hear about as much. And it's really pretty easy. See any other fish with it? That's a I good don't. fish. Yeah. You know, we've had a good day of fishing. We have. Nothing. Nothing wrong with this. And you'll notice too, you know, the rods that we're using, it's a, a medium light. And that's pretty important with the hair jigs. So when they bite, not only can you feel it really well, um, but you've got some give too, so they don't feel you. Yeah, I imagine the monofilament's part of that too. It's, this yep. would be tough to do with braided line. Exactly. And fluorocarbon, that's great in clear water, but it doesn't function very well when you spool it up. I suppose you, you just need that stretch. Exactly. Tell you what, I'd like to thank you for sharing this technique with us and spending the time out here. I think this is something that's that's pretty informational for a lot of viewers. You spilled the, you spilled your secrets. I spilled my guts. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's what we like to do is show people different things that are happening. So we appreciate being on the show. I, I appreciate you guys having me, and hopefully the viewers catch some fish on marabou jigs. Jason Mitchell Outdoors has been brought to you by Shields, North Dakota Tourism, Yarcraft Boats, Yamaha, Onyx, Sonar Phone, Salmo, Northland Fishing Tackle, and Jason Mitchell Elite Series Rods. To find out more information on Jason Mitchell Outdoors, make their official webpage one of your favorite pages. Find out upcoming show schedules and airtimes, along with past shows, article and product reviews at jasonmitchelloutdoors.com. 
Great information on the outdoors is just one click away.